the Conquering Mount Scrap More with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're going to start putting our footstool together. Last week I showed you how to make your pattern and how to put your interfacing and batting together. So what I've done now at the end of that video I kind of told you to put your strings together, right? So that you would have, you know, these lovely little piece strings on top of your interfacing and your batting. Now if you didn't have interfacing sitting around your sewing room for the last years, decades, uh, you could just double back the sides because this is the side of your footstool. And I also showed you how to get your top done. So I am going to show you one of my tops. Now this is the back. That's the pattern that you saw from last week. And it's just newspaper, right? So I put, I found black strings that I had pieced on calculator tape. I don't remember when they, remember when I, that was kind of like the rage on how to deal with your small scraps. Well, I had yards and yards and yards of this calculator tape. So I decided, okay, I'm going to use them as part of my top and bottom of my quilt because it's the perfect time to use them. So they've been sitting in my, my scrap bin for quite a while and I have an opportunity to get rid of some of them. I still have lots, but I've got rid of some. So right now, I'm going to show you how to trim these. And I'm going to show you that um, on the backs of your top and bottom where you're going to have to fudge a little bit to put the footstool together. But come on with me, we'll show you what we need to do first at the cutting table and then at the sewing machine. Okay, so here's our the one side of this panel. Now if you haven't sewn this. I'm going to link you to um, another YouTube video I've done that shows you how to sew on batting or on paper. I mean basically this came together very quickly you know and you're making fabric out of your strings and scraps. Now we did talk about poverty piecing here and you see the poverty piecing does break up the the work a bit and gives you a little bit more uh, variety. Here's a piece that didn't have poverty piecing and you see very distinctive stripes, right? So, and I mean, that'll be fun for, it's a toy room, it's a, for the grandkids, it's their toy room stool. So, anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over and like I say, don't worry about, uh, you know, if you haven't sewn yours yet, you know, and you, you have time to do this, it's going to stay up on YouTube for a while. Now let me get my klutz glove on and... What I'm going to do first is I'm going to do this side because this was 12 and a half. So I'm just going to start with one side. Okay, there. So this all goes into my string bin. Now I'm going to get the other ruler. Hang on. Uh, I forgot to get it. I'm sorry. Oh. So I'm going to get this ruler here and make sure that we're sitting at 12 and a half and across because that's going to be important that okay. now I'm going to move this up right to the end and I'm at 12 and a half so there we go so that goes into the string bin or the scrap bin now this was this ended up being 21 and a half, I believe. So we're going to have, now this is just a little bit, a little bit left over the top, right? So we're just going to quickly trim that off and then try and figure out. Now you want to line this up so it's square as you're trimming. I've never made furniture before. So this ought to be interesting. And then this is 21 and a half. So I'm going to put my 21 and a half down there. Ooh, okay. Hang on. 21 and a half. So if I measure from this, this end here off camera and I put it at 21 and a half, I am right, right, right at the edge of this and I'm just gonna go slide it over 21 and a half yeah 
try to take off hardly anything here. Okay, just make sure. 21 and a half there. It looks a little laggy. Okay. I could go 20. Actually, I should go just 21. That would be better. And I'll, I'll trim them all the same. See, this thing has shrunk. This work has shrunk this way because it's been sewn, right? So, if I go, I cut it originally at 21, but if I trim now to 21, in, or I originally this is 21 and a half. I'm going to trim it down to 21 just to make all the pieces the same height because they're a little higher than a normal footstool. So I'm going to trim up all of these pieces and then next I'm going to try show you how to do this one, the, the octagon, or not the octagon, the partial hexi. Okay, so this has to be 12 and a half across. And this is not 12 and a half across because it's more like 13 and a quarter because I did not include the, I, when I put this all down, this here is 12 and a half with seam allowance. And this seam allowance is there. So I have to trim a little bit of this off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this angle first because this angle works. Okay, and then I'm going to take, now this takes a little bit of fudging, and I'm okay with a little fudging. So now I'm going to, let's see, if I trim off just a quarter, I got, betcha, if I just trimmed off three eighths of an inch, I'd be fine just to lay this out and put this, how am I going to do this so I can, okay. Just a minute, we're a little challenged today. Yeah, okay, three-eighths of an inch is right there. So if I do three-eighths of an inch off, I should accommodate for the fact that this is a full seam allowance against a full seam allowance, right? This three-eighths does all sorts of wonderful things as you're sewing. Three eighths, there we go. And the last bit is right here. Now I have taped this so to kind of maintain its structural integrity. They sound like Scotty from Star Trek. There, basically all I wanted to do was keep the angle correct. Okay, so, and like I say, this piece, I put a piece string together and then a solid string, right? So this is going to come together. This is the middle, right? And th these are the outside edges. So let me finish trimming all of these up, and we'll come back to the sewing machine. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is sew the top and bottom together because that's actually the hardest sewing. Now I've taken all the paper off the back. Actually my darling husband did. What a sweetheart. Now we're just going to do the first part of the Y seam. So this doesn't matter if it's upper, the top or bottom because they're all, all six panels are different. All right? so I'm just going to slip this under, get my... Get this up. Oh, that's a long seat. Okay, here we go. And so you, you do the first two of three for the top or bottom, which depending on what side you're attacking this from. And somewhere in my travels, I have lost my little scissor. Okay, here it is. All right, here I go. So I get my thread. And I've been saving all my threads and odds and sods of, of stuff for a while here now. So I've got a, quite the little collection of stuffing for this footstool. I have never made um, never made furniture before. So this is kind of a new adventure for me too. But I thought, well, we'll try it and we'll 
See how it goes. Alright, now I'm just gonna clip this. Okay. table wobbles big time. Why does it wobble so? Oh well. Anyways. There. So this is where we're at on this. So now I'm going to put the next piece on the bottom and I'm going to flip this over and we're going to do the Y seams the way I showed you guys how to do a Y seam a couple of weeks back. That's okay. And We'll start and we'll just back stitch a bit just to get it. Make sure that it's secure. Okay. And I have little sliders on the base of my sewing machine, so I would imagine that's what's causing the wobble. Now, we're just going to sew along here, and I'm going to press open this part of the Y. Just finger press, just very quick. Very, very quick little finger press. And we're going to line up the base of that. Yeah. Now this is all bias. So whatever you do when you're sewing along here, don't stretch it. Do the best you can not to stretch it right to the very end. Okay, now we see where the Y bit is right here. And I'm gonna sneak up right to the needle and I'm just gonna hand crank it. Go back a couple stitches, go forward. Okay, now we're back at the same spot. Now I'm gonna take this and maneuver this around like so. And there we go. Just lay this out really nice and neat the best you can. Okay. There we go, and put these pieces, and one's just a tad bigger than the other, oh well, that'll be okay. There, now, I'm going to start the other one, and I'll show you what I've got here. So here we're going to open this up. And now I'm going to press this little Y seam, this part right here open, right? Do you see that? Open right there. And I'm going to put the base of it down, just very quick. And I'll link you to a Y seam too if you, if you do. This is the way I do Y seams. There's no, I don't see anybody else doing Y seams this way, but anyway. So now I'm going to hold this and this point right here, right where I need it. So I make my Y seam and I don't stretch it and it should work out just perfect. Nothing pulls on it. Oh, I got a little bit of paper, that's okay. your seams match up because you're using string, right? Okay, now I'm just relining that. I'm going to hand crank right up to where that seam starts. Then back up, forward, back to the seam. Starts now. I'm going to shift everything under. Get it all lying just perfect. Well, that one fell in line very quick. Okay. <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to reline this up so that they match perfectly because you want that to match. Going to, uh, I'm going to open this up for you right now and show you what I got. So this is 
what it looks like from the top or the bottom. And this is what the, either, I'm not sure which is top or bottom, I, I suppose it doesn't matter. Right, so now we've got our top or bottom sewed together. We're going to stop, pause, fix the wobble in the table, and we'll start sewing the side panels. Okay, so what I've done is I've sewn six panels because it's a hexi, it's got six sides. The top and bottom are gonna be hexies. Now I have decided to go with a rainbow, right? So I'm going to try and make it a rainbow so the rainbow goes all the way around the, the, the footstool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to line them up because they're both 21 inches long. And I'm just going to sew them with a quarter inch foot, my quarter inch foot. Make sure I don't have any, you know, tugging and pulling. And, and I, because this is really super thick, I'm going to make sure I backstitch. I'm going to make sure I backstitch and I'm going to go slowly through. Because I don't want to, even though I've got a pretty powerful machine here, I don't want to be stressing it out by racing along. Okay, so now in order to keep the moving, you're going to slowly feed them. Right? Now I've got my stitch, my stitches. Uh, like I'm, I'm sitting at 25 to 30 stitches per inch, so my stitch length is really short. Because if this pops, it's going to pop along the seam because that's where the most bulk is. So, what I'm going to do, and once I get to the end, I'm going to back stitch. And I'm going to turn this around. So I can just flip it over like that and stitch it again. And now I want to be just a little bit away from, like not even an eighth of an inch, away from that, this stitch line. So I'm basically, I'm stitching it a little firmer, a little, you know, giving it a little security. So you want, but you do want a double stitch. Okay. And right to the end. Okay. So I'm going to finish sewing all my panels together and then I'll come back and show you how to attach them to the top and the bottom. Okay, so I have my panel all sewn together here. I know it's it's like just huge, so you're gonna have a hard time seeing it. But what we're going to do is I'm going to put this on the bottom, right? And I'm going to sew the panel to the top, or put, put the panel on top. Now, this is kind of awkward sewing because it's actually really, where's my foot going to go? It's actually a little bit large. Now, <laughs> it's really large. I've never made furniture before. I think I told you that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start it and then I'm going to pin, I know I don't normally pin when it comes to this, I'm going to pin right in the corner and right where I need this to come up. Wow, these are the dullest pins I've ever had in my life. And because the top, the top and bottom are a little bit big, I need it to ease in. So I'm going to let my feed dogs do the work of easing. Okay. And then I'm just going to go slow. Here, if I pin it, okay. Alright, now we're just going to go slow. And we're going to get all of that ease in. Ugh. <laughs> while I arm wrestle this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and we get right up to that pin stop. 
just before go back a bit over again there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade change positions for the next one okay so basically what I'm doing is I'm moving the bottom part into position right so here we are with the bottom part here's where we're going to sew and I'm going to mark my bottom and I'm going to go in about a quarter inch and then mark the seam where I need it to come out about a quarter inch down okay and then we're just going to gently tug it tug it just from the middle of the work until it fits in the right spot there we go just just like that okay now now there's a bit of fudging on furniture there's a bit of fudging on this that's for sure but that's okay it's a fun idea right it's a fun idea and I think you guys are gonna enjoy making one of these and it keeps stuff out of the landfill which is really important nowadays. Okay, where did my pin go? It's right there. Okay, up to the pin, back, cross. Ah, there, take the pin out. Now, adjust this again. Oh, this panel is huge. <laughs> this panel is just massive. Okay, now my needle is in the down position, so it's the perfect position for it to be in. So I can start pivoting the work. Basically what you want to do is you want to pivot this about. And of course it's a little on the stiff side. Oh, there we are. We're perfect. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this pin in right about a quarter inch down. Because right where that angle is, I want to put it a quarter inch down and then I want to put it quarter inch down from where my seam lies and uh, let me get this just like so and hold it in place where I can see my pin and now okay just make sure all of that's there all right go back okay now there we go and you want to ease this in just a bit. I'm going to let the feed dogs do the work of easing it in. And, okay, here we go. And it's okay if it's a little, it's a toy room stool. that pin and again right to the edge back right to that pin again pull out the pin maneuver this this at some point will start to stand up on its own <laughs> and I think it's about now okay okay there we go let me get this all organized okay we've got this find our little point, get a point in, and get our seam in. There we go, get that seam just perfectly in line. <sighs> Put your pin, there we go. And yeah, just think you've made an entire piece of furniture with one pin. Okay, there. Just gotta get, hang on. Ugh. Boy. And sometimes it takes a bit of fuss, uh, fuss, fussing. <sighs> yeah, we get that. And now I think we're on the straightaway. For the most part, we're on the straightaway. And when I'm pulling underneath, I'm pulling not from the edge, right? I'm pulling from in the middle, so I'm not distorting my 
this is a bias seam right now that I'm trying to put in. So there. But really careful that you not, oh, okay, hang on, that we not uh, stretch this. And like I said, the top and bottom are a little bit big. Okay. There we go. Back, drag back up to that pin. Pull my pin out. Oh, I've got two sides left. Okay, I don't know what happened there. We lost uh, film, but anyways, I turned this inside out. I just wanted to see what this looked like now. And yes, you'll get a big, this is with the bottom. So all of it's now sewn all the way around. Now I'm gonna sew on the top. So I'm gonna put, put it inside out again <sighs> and arm wrestle it back into position. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's hope this works. Okay, let's hope this all works. Now on one side of this top, I have a little bit of sewn bit on the side. Now that's where I'm going to leave my hole, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, um, let's see, I need to get this down inside here a bit. Okay, all right, so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, it's got a mind of its own. <laughs> this thing definitely has a mind of its own. Okay, so where I'm going to start is I need to do a little bit of easing in, right? So where I'm going to start, so I'm going to start on this side here and go around the other way. So this has got to be sewn upside down, right? So this part is on the bottom, but you want to take some time to line it up. Right, line it up the best you can. So it's about a quarter inch down from your seam, your first seam, and then about a quarter inch down here. And then you're gonna just pin it in place, just like that. So now you're going to do that to the other side. Okay, you're gonna do it to the other side. You're gonna find that quarter inch from both sides, both this side and this side down, and then you're gonna pin it in place right quarter inch down so that perfectly matches. And then you're gonna go down like this. Okay, now, so we're gonna flip it upside over, upside down, but we're basically going to do this all the same way. Now, if you want to put a uh, pin in the middle, you are certainly most welcome to do so. I don't know why I picked the dullest pins on the planet, but they're here. Okay, so now, uh, let's start. Okay, let's get all of that in there. And we're just gonna position this back just a hair. <laughs> Pull that pin out. Okay. Oh, come on. Yeah. Now this thing gets pretty heavy when it's all filled with all your bits, little bits and bobs of thread and fabric and whatnot. Okay. There. So same technique as before except now we're going to leave an opening right away there now I'm going to adjust lift my foot because it's the needle is in the down position now I'm going to pull this around so and I actually get this no, this is the edge that's got that wee little bit of, I don't know if you can see that. It's got a wee little thin strip here that we're going to keep. That's important. Now we're just going to do an inch in. About an inch there, stop, back stitch. And pull your, your, your work away there. And now because that edge is not gonna stretch, right? Because it's got a, a really good 
edge on it. And I'm just going to put this in here like so. Now, now I'm going to start about an inch away ouch, from that edge because I want to make sure I have the hole to be able to drop my stitching or my fabric bits in. Okay, and yeah, I gotta get both threads on there. There we go. Now once you're filled, this is where you would just hand sew this up together, right? Hey, okay, now, all right, we right up to the pin and pull the pin out and position. Now we have a hole in this work that we can stick our hand in, right? So now we're just going to keep pivoting this around. And of course, the more you pivot it around, the harder it is to maneuver because, okay, there we go. We've got that edge, got that edge, put it down, hold this up. We're going to pin. I am so gonna need a loss either a nap or something when I get done because I feel like I've been arm wrestling this thing for hours and I haven't been that's the funny thing it's just it's stiff and it's awkward okay there we go go across back stitch there okay get this all lined up again and basically you're only sewing a few inches of this at a time, you know. And if you had double batted instead, it probably wouldn't, this is pretty tough to come on. Because I wanted this thing to be able to stand, right? So now again, we're doing another pivot around. <sighs> <sighs> okay. <sighs> Either I'm getting better at doing these Y seams or... Okay, a quarter inch down, right in the seam, a quarter inch down. Okay, line it up so it's perfect. Tip your pin to pin it in place. There, now maneuver this. So, uh, there. Okay, just maneuver it a bit. It's a bit out of out of line. <laughs> and let the feed dogs take the excess up. It's it'll it's fine. It'll work. Let's get another piece here. <laughs> okay. We're not far. We're not far. We're not far. And then we get to the, the big ta-da moment, and it'll look grand. Trust me, it'll look fine. Okay, here we go. Oh, put this. I've got this a quarter inch, and then I put it a quarter inch down, and I line up my seam the best I can. And this is a bias edge, so I don't want to stretch it. So now I try and get as much of this lined up as I can from the other side. Okay. And I put this down. Oh, and my thread just snapped. Hang on. Technical difficulty. Hold on. Hold on. There. Pull that out. get back to the other side of this before we pivot again. When your thread snaps like that, sometimes you're better off to start over. Okay, now I can just trim off this. I don't know why the thread snapped, but it snapped. So now, I'm just going to lay this down 
can pivot a bit. There we go. Now I'm going to double sew that. Just back stitch it very quickly. Now you see where it's a little over here? Just want to put, just want to pull it back just a bit. Just a hair. So it kind of lines up. And the feed dogs will take care of any loose bits. All the way up to this pin. Okay. And back. Okay, with the needle down pivot for the last last one. Oh. <laughs> It's kind of hard to work on this when it's upside down, right? But anyway, okay, I'm just going to get okay. Now I'm this edge edge is already sewn, so I don't need to do anything now except hold it in place and try and maneuver it. So oh, I could probably pin right here just to hold everything there where it needs to be. And then we're at the ta-da moment, but we just got one more seam to go. Oops, probably a little bit more that way. There. There we go. There, nice. There we go. And we get the last little bit of this tucked into the right spot. Last bit. Okay, now we turn it. And we have our ta-da moment. Okay, we're finally done and I need a nap. Um, this wrestling, okay, it's now, you know, 20 inches tall, right? And it's all the colors of the rainbow because I've sewed it in the right spot. Now you can see on the orange, this is where I have my hole where I can stuff it with all my batting bits and th like thread bits and little fabric bits. And there it is. So it's just going to sit, it's going to sit in the corner of my sewing room taking up a little bit of space, but not too much. And I'm just going to fill it, you know, with my every day until it's filled. Now this is a really big footstool. You could make a square one and have it filled not too far from now. But I mean, this, this is going to take, you know, maybe a couple months to fill up the way I sew. You know, you are probably having it a little bit different, but this is, was a lot of fun to do. It was a lot of struggling to put it together, but that's because I used the interfacing instead of two double bat, two layers of batting. But as you can see, it does give it some structure and it's soft. You know, you still have some, it still is going to stand nicely and all the rest of this stuff. So, oh, I need a nap. I really do. I've been wrestling this, it seems like, for hours and it hasn't been that long, but for me, it was a lot today. So I hope you have a very wonderful and happy week ahead. Okay, you take care and we'll see you later. Bye. Thank you for watching our video today. We are just overjoyed with how our channel has grown. And um, we would like you to share, like, and subscribe these videos with your friends and other, other people. Uh, this is one of the quilts that we might are considering at, at this time to do a sew along for. It is um, a crazy original scrappy design that was made with too much co coffee and too many granola bars and it's a lot of fun to do and it, it is a really good scrap buster. So share, like, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Uh, our plan for 2022 is two different sew alongs for sure and two different case studies and we're going to do uh, try and do a thing on uh, grouping on uh, strings and crumbs and then another one on curves. So we've got rather an ambitious 2022 planned 
for you here. So, like I say, I hope you come back. Have a great week ahead, and we'll talk to you later. Bye!